In this video, we will look at some key elements to getting started with your new course development. All courses in GallNet are created in My Classes. Therefore, My Classes can be used for any course, whether you are teaching a face-to-face, -face, hybrid, or online course. When you first enter a course, it will be blank and the home page will be set to the empty module page by default. If you would like to use a template in your course to help you get started, Instructional Design and Delivery has made a template available in the Canvas Commons that helps meet Quality Matter standards by design. To import the course template, click on the Commons link in the Global Navigation menu. And then you can search for and select the template you would like to use. We will select the SU Online and Hybrid Courses template. When you have selected the resource, click the Import Download button. This will allow you to select the course you wish to import the template into. To select the course, click the checkbox next to the course name. Then click Import into Course. You may need to scroll depending on the number of courses you have available. A success message will confirm that the content is being imported into your course. Depending on the size of the content, it might take a few minutes for everything to transfer over. Return to your course in My Classes, and you will be able to start customizing the template to make it your own. The first thing you can do in your course is decide what you want your course homepage to be by clicking the Choose Homepage button. There are many options, and your selection may vary depending on how you are using My Classes for your course and what you want students to see first every time they enter your course. You may decide to leave it set as modules and organize all of your content there. You may use My Classes for a face-to-face -face course where you have them upload assignments online along with or instead of submitting them on paper in class. Or you may have them take all of their quizzes online. In this case, if you're only using the assignments piece, you may choose to have the assignments list as your home page. Instructional Design and Delivery recommends using the Syllabus tool as your home page. Although it's called Syllabus in the menu, it allows for much more than that to be included. If you import the course template, the syllabus page will be selected as the home page by default. Within the syllabus tool, you can edit the top of the page to add a welcome message and content such as a link to your syllabus. The bottom of the page automatically pulls in all published assignments and organizes them by due date, creating a dynamic course schedule of activities. If you do not want the assignments listed on the home page, then instead of the syllabus tool, you may choose to create a page and designate it as the front page. You will not be able to select a page as your home page unless you have designated a front page first. To do so, go to Pages, and in the Options menu for that page, click Use as Front Page. Now when you navigate Home and select your home page, you will have the option to use that page. Now, whichever page you selected will act as the front page for the course. For online and hybrid courses, the syllabus tool or the front page of your choice should help students navigate to other areas of the course so that they can find content quickly. Once you have selected your home page, you can add your syllabus to the course. If you have created your syllabus in Word, you can export it as a PDF, upload it into My Classes, and link to it from the home page or add it to a module. IDND recommends linking to PDFs over Word documents so that the content is protected and can be easily viewed in a universal PDF viewer. You can upload your syllabus into the files area of the course at any time before linking it to text on a page or adding it to a module. When you edit the page, you can add the file anywhere within the page that you would like to. To do so, place your cursor where you would like the file. Then proceed to select Insert from the toolbar, and then select Document, then Course Document from the drop-down menu. Next, select the file. The file name will indicate that the syllabus is attached. Then select the Save icon from the bottom right to save the page. However, if you have a busy file name, you may want to link the file to text. Linking a file to text is also recommended for meeting Section 508 Accessibility Compliance. To do so, edit the page, type the text you want to link the file to, highlight it, then go to Insert, Document, Course Document, and then select the document. 
You will then see the text flash to indicate that the file has been attached, once you attach it. You will need to press Save to retain your changes. I have placed the Word document in the file, but what I actually wanted was the PDF. To upload a file you may not have added before you edited the page, you can do so by going to Insert, Document, and then selecting Upload Document. Select Upload File to browse for the file and then select it. Then the file will attach to the text and be placed in the Files folder of your course at the same time. Make sure to select the Save icon once you're finished. You may choose to create a content page in the course to copy and paste your syllabus into. You can link to this page using nearly the same process as before. Select Insert from the toolbar, but this time select Link from the drop-down menu instead of Document. Then select Course Links. Next, choose your syllabus page from the page list. To add your syllabus to a module, you must first create a module if you haven't already. If you use the ID&D online or hybrid template, you'll have some module outlines prepared for you. If you do not have any modules built or if you'd like to add a new one, click Add Module. Then click the Add button to select what content you want to include. You can choose a file or you can choose the syllabus page, depending on how you included your syllabus. Next, you can decide what features of my classes you will be using. You can then clean up your course navigation by hiding unwanted items. For example, if you want to hide the files area from students because you do not want students to see files before they are made available in a course module, you can hide it from the course navigation. To modify your course navigation, go to Settings, click the Navigation tab, and click and drag items from the Enabled Items list down to the Disabled Tools list. You can also enable tools that you would like to use that are disabled by default. You can then rearrange the order that they are listed in the navigation by clicking and dragging them or selecting Move from the drop-down menu for that item. Some tools in the course navigation are only for instructor use and are not visible to students, such as the multi-tool. When you are done making your changes, remember to press Save so that they will be retained when you navigate away. If you would like to see what the course looks like from a student perspective, you can test the course using Student View. As you can see, the multi-tool disappears from the Student View in the course navigation menu and a border indicates that you are currently logged into Student View. While in Student View, you can preview assignments, complete tests, and even have grades as a student. When you are done, you can leave Student View. You are now ready to start adding assignments and more content as needed. When creating content, many of the features in my classes allow for duplication to help reduce work. For example, if you will frequently use an assignment type, you can create the first assignment with all of the information, then duplicate it to make a copy. You can rename the copy and update it as needed. You can do the same for pages, discussions, and even modules. In modules, you can publish and unpublish specific content within the module or the entire module itself. Be aware that if the content is unpublished, the students will not be able to see it. So even if you have items published that are in a module, students will not see those items until the module itself is published. Also be aware that when you publish a module, all items in the module will automatically be published along with it. So if you want to leave one element unpublished, you may need to go back and unpublish that item. Furthermore, students cannot access your course until you publish the course itself, even if all of the content in your course is already published. When you are ready for students to see the course, or at least the prepared and published parts of the course, you must go to the home page and publish the course for students to access it. The unpublished will be red when the course is unpublished, and publish will be green when the course is published. If you go to Settings, you can verify that your course is published at any time. 
For more information on creating assignments and additional content, sign up for an instructional design and delivery workshop, watch additional video tips, or refer to the following guides.